Hello, I've been thinking it's about time that I did the conversion of this XCAM, uh, what is this, XCAM A10-3H 3-axis gimbal, and I want to convert this to use the Storm32 brushless gimbal controller, which is what's going to be running on here. Uh, so this is the gimbal. The hardware is pretty nice. It has a slip ring on here so it can turn around 360 degrees continuously like that. So that's what really is the nice, the attracting point of this. Um, but unfortunately the firmware is pretty mediocre. I've used it and it kind of it works alright, but it's not as flexible as the Storm32 and it's certainly not as open source as the Storm32 and it only runs on a single IMU I think. Pretty sure it does. Whereas the Storm32 can actually can run with three. Um, not really sure where the third one goes, but you can certainly run it with two, which gives you a lot better stabilization. Uh, and I just like the, the firmware and the guy, Ollie W, who makes these, or designed it at least. And um, yeah, I just, I just like the whole, the, everything about the Storm32 gimbal controller. So I want to convert it to that. Another interesting point about the Storm32 controller is that there's a version of it called NT, uh, which I forget what that stands for, but it uses a um, you can use a, in this case I'm using an OpenPilot Mini CC3D as the IMU, which is going to be stuck on the bottom of the gimbal there to sense which way the camera is pointing. And this communicates with the main board by a protocol called the NT, <coughs> NT protocol. And that takes the place of I squared C. And apparently it is more robust to interference and that's probably going to be quite important in the case of this one where the wires are going to be going through the slip ring and then through the motors in each case so when you have a situation like this um, and especially with the slip ring because there's sort of little um, leaf pieces running on tracks in here I think that's how that works so this is a bit more likely to be uh, to suffer from interference which is what this NT system is supposed to overcome so as with most 3-axis gimbals, there's quite a bunch of wires coming out the top here. This one is pretty obvious what that is. These three are for the yaw motor. The rest of them are not so obvious. They are all grouped together into this fairly nice connector here. And um, I have to say a big thank you to Paul Atherton who notified me in the comments as to where I could find a wiring diagram or wiring labeling more to the point for these. Um, and Paul says he's actually done this with the Storm32 and NT mod on the same gimbal, so he knows what he's talking about. Um, he also points out that the poles are different on these motors, so that needs to be set up correctly as well. And he gives a link somewhere in here to the next page that I'm going to show you, so I'll put a link to this in the description. And this is a thread on RC Groups where you can see uh, this big one here is what we're talking about at the moment so there's 12 pins there well two of them have nothing on them so there's 10 and they're laid out like that so it's uh, actually fairly easy I hope to get this converted or to at least hook up these wires and have everything connected in the right way and you can see there that there's 10 wires and uh, two right at the end with nothing on them at the other end of the wiring we have a plug here which goes into your GoPro and that's going to power the GoPro and also bring back the analog video sig signal uh, so you can view what the camera sees while you're flying. I'm just going to ignore this one for the time being. And then of course we also have this one which is for the IMU and there are six wires in there. I don't know why there's six wires. You only really need four I would think and I'm only going to be using four so um, I'm just going to replace this plug with or just replace the four wires that I need um, using one of these plugs here that I've found in my box of pieces so that should be a fairly easily easy change and then these ones here are all going to be well, I'll do the same for the I squared or for the NT connections and then for the motor connections I'll change those to servo cable type connectors because they have to connect into these 
three sets of three plugs on there. Okay, well that's all those connections made there. Wasn't too difficult, just a little bit of soldering and connecting and stuff. And I already have the NT firmware flashed onto here, and I already have the NT IMU firmware flashed onto here, so it should just be a matter of connecting it all up, and I hope it should be ready to go after doing a bit of calibration and a little bit of tuning and uh, making sure that the orientations are correct and so on. Okay, I made a little wooden test platform to put it on and connected all the wires up and everything, and it's working quite well. I tuned it for this camera, this is a Xiaomi Yi. Uh, it's not actually the one I'll be using, so I'll have to do the tuning again, but it's good to have some practice at doing that, I suppose. And I tuned it for just using the single IMU, that's the one underneath there. And then I switched the second IMU on, which is on the top of the thingy, and it sort of uh, lost its tune, which is to be expected according to the documentation. So you have to fiddle around with the tuning parameters a bit more to get it running with the IMU2. But I found that very difficult because you it's very difficult to figure out which parameter is affecting the behavior. <clears throat> so I decided that for now I'll just give up on that and I'll use just a single IMU underneath and it still works quite well. So uh, I have it hold 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 is the mode that it's in at the moment. So it's going to be holding its pitch and roll and your so you can see that the camera is not moving in any orientation at all. Um, and it works quite good. And I can go all the way around like this. Well, it's a little bit tricky to do that because I have a wire hanging over the side. So instead of doing that, I'll show you what the wire does. Uh, oops. Oh, it's controlling pitch here, isn't it? Sorry. I need to... Um, so I'm using this servo tester to send a PWM signal into the RC pins. And let me just put that on the yaw, which is what I thought I was going to do. And now I can get it to just turn around and around and around forever, thanks to that slip ring in the top. Very nifty. And of course I can turn it the other way. Oops. And I can, it's a little bit tricky to get it to stop because you've got to get this right in the middle of the range. Or what I could do is push the button on here and then, uh, this being a servo tester, this is going to be the center position of the servo, so that's why it stops moving. And it has another mode where it sort of does a servo sweep. So we get this sweeping behavior. So here it is stuck on the big hex and I'm using the channels 5 and 6 PWM output under under there uh, to control the servo tilt because you can do both IBUS, so that's IBUS coming out the top to run the flight controller, but it also outputs the normal PWM simultaneously from the, the normal PWM pins in there. Um, and I have those set on my dials. so. I can control the pitch with channel 5. It's just a little bit tricky to get it um, back in the center. Yeah. And I can control the yaw with channel 6. So it's able to go round and round. And this is also <laughs> hard to get it to stop in the right place. Oh, there we go. That was good. But. Um, Seems to be working pretty well, so let's uh, take it for a fly. It's a little bit on the windy side today, so that means it's going to kind of wobble round. But I guess that's a good test of how stable the gimbal is making the video, so uh, I guess that's a good thing. Anyway, let's see uh, if I can uh, pitch downwards. Yep and turn turn the gimbal around so I'm just letting it turn around at full speed for now and now 
see if I can turn it back towards me and get it to stop there. Kind of. Okay. There we go. Now let's fly manually for a bit. Oh, it's windy. Shit. Oh. Yeah, it's quite windy. This is a bit annoying, but uh Oh shit. Oh jeez. It's actually quite hard to fly when this wind is like this. Is that camera doing what it's supposed to be doing? Oh, okay, so the camera's working, but now it's not really pointing at me anymore. Let me just uh, GPS hold there. And I'll see if I can get the camera pointing at me again. It's a little bit hard to see up there now. That should be it. Oh, look too far. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's not bad. Uh, so yeah, looks like it's working. And if I just rotate the airframe around, around and around and around. You should still see that the camera stays where it is. That looks pretty good. How about, uh, let's look, let's look up a little bit while we do that. <laughs> cool. Man, this flies everywhere. Okay, let's look. Uh, so that should be been 90 degrees down, and now if I rotate frame again. I just want to sort of check and see if there's any any instability or anything in, in each of these orientations. Because I notice that when I'm tuning the gimbal, when, they, when the pieces of the gimbal are at different angles to each other, the tune sort of did go out a little bit. It wasn't as good as, as it was in other orientations. But I think we're good there. Nice. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. What, what should we do now? I think it's working fine. Fly to the side. Fly to the other side. Oh, it's really drifting with the wind here. Um, but, uh, oops, wrong way. Yeah, now is when I need a second operator, eh? Because it's hard to see what that camera's doing. Alright, a little bit of manual flying. Yeah. Trouble is now it's not pointing at me, of course, but uh, let's come back this way. Looks pretty stable though. But of course you can't see the tiny little vibrations until you look at the video afterwards. OK, 
Okay, it's a uh, position hold there. Okay, so now I, I can't. I have no idea which way the camera is facing. It should be facing that way, I think, but uh, I can't really see it to do anything about it. What does that do? No idea. I moved it, but I don't know which way I moved it. <laughs> uh, all right, so I'll put it so that it's pitching straight down and do a return to home. It's going with the wind very fast. <laughs> and just hold there. And now I'll turn the yaw, full yaw in one direction. Yep. Okay. And I've pitched it up. Now I'll do full yaw in one direction again. It seems to be working pretty well. And you're to the middle. You're uh, pitched down a little bit. All right, land. So, um, yeah, it looks good. I hope it's not all shuddery in the video. Sweet. Alright, let's see how that turned out. <laughs>